hello and welcome to another tutorial video from Basic Fishing. This video is going to be about how to target Piper with a float rig. Now many people will know that my first ever tutorial video that I posted was over 4 years ago and that ended up being my top video which was something that I did not expect. So for today's video I decided to make a second updated version on how to catch Piper and we'll be adding some additional information and tips and tricks on how to target these tricky mini swordfish. So we all remember what a piper looks like. It looks like a small swordfish, but it's also known as half beak or garfish to other people worldwide. Extremely popular for food and also well used for bait for any species, especially when alive. The interesting thing I found about the piper was how well they camouflage they are close to the surface, which makes it hard for us to detect even with polarized sunglasses. The only time you will know that they are around if you see any pipers jumping close to the surface to escape predators, or if they come in extremely close, like in this footage here. This was in the far north where bait fish are forever present and provide easy picking for the predatory kingfish that can be elusive and strike out of nowhere. But even then, the pipers proved to be a challenge to hook onto. I also found that any spot, wherever it is, whether it is shallow, has structure, and is nice and calm, is a good place to target the pipers. Now, in my previous tutorial video and in most of my other videos where I am targeting piper, I mainly demonstrated on where to go to target them and also shown you how to increase your chances on hooking onto the pipers. And there was nothing more but to use small sabiki hooks like the ones I have here. This is the one sabiki hook that I have the most faith in and burly is also another key to attract them to your spot. So everyone knows I just have a simple sabiki rig that works great for piper and a large float. It works, but there are days when the piper just proved to be insanely stubborn. And by insanely stubborn, I mean they are there, but they aren't committed at all. We're working hard today, Lee, that's for sure. <laughs> You got a fish? Oh, nice, nice. The prawn works. Wow, that's a huge one too. Holy cow, that's a big one. Oh, but he's holding the hook though. At least another bird is working. Ah, yeah, me too. All right, nice, nice. Land him this time, land him, Lee. Land that sucker. What well, did he swallow it again? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I think I'm on. Yeah, I'm on. <laughs> oh wait, am I? Oh yeah, I'm on. <laughs> I had a pipe this whole time. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, oh come on. <sighs> yeah. Well, that's classic. I'll put your rod like this, Lee, so it doesn't drop. I just had a take. Huh? Ah, oh, yeah. So here is a good trick I like to mention. This burly mix is nothing but bread, water and cat food mixed together. And what I did was I casted my float out 
and threw the burly mix around the float to attract the fish to the area. This tactic did work, and after going through the mullets, I finally hooked onto a piper. No, not yet, not yet. Oh, I thought... oh no! Ah, oh, dropped it off. Dropped off. Piper? Yeah, it was a piper. Damn it. Only to have lost it, sadly. During the times when I was still fishing off the wolf, I used just a casual rod and reel setup, but then I switched on to a more lightweight tackle setup. But honestly, when it comes to rod and reels, anything will do for the piper. I mean, even a simple pole and a few feet of line is enough to get the piper. It's that simple. However, for my case, I use my trusty light tackle spin rod that I normally use for trout, perch, carp, and occasionally try to get some kawaii on it. The Sabiki, while it is a great rig to use, can have unseen challenges. Like here for example, I was too late to prevent this piper from causing a nasty tangle. But luckily for the piper, it was perfectly hooked, so it was released, and I spent the next 10 minutes fixing the mess left by the piper. Sabiki rig isn't just the only rig you use to target piper. This is the rig that everyone used way before the Sibiki was even used. It's just a simple float rig. And here is what the traditional Piper rig looks like. Nothing but a simple hook at the end of the line at a certain length with split shots as weight. To construct this rig, here are the components you will need and I'll explain why I recommend these components. First up, the first component you need are the trout hooks. This particular one are ultra sharp, meaning that even with a thin strike, you can easily set the hook. And since pipers are very pecky at the bait, that is usually important. And so far, with this black magic trout hook, I'm very impressed because most people say that trout hooks rust easily in salt water. And I have seen this before with other brands, but so far, with this, black magic hook, there is not a single hint of rust on it at all. The size of the hook is also perfect for the piper since piper has really small mouths. The size of this hook is also perfect for the piper and also other bait fish since piper has really small mouths. But to give you a rough idea on how small this is, take a look at this hook comparison. I just compared this trout hook next to the KLT 3 barrel hook and it's really small. Also make sure that the bait you use is small enough to fit onto the hook so the piper can grab it and swallow it with no problem. For the floats, here are the ones that I prefer to use. The ball float can be used and is more accessible but they are not the best biting indicators unlike the pencil style float. As you can see, the pencil style float bite indication is far more accurate which gives you perfect timing to strike for the piper or other bait fish around the area. For weight, this is what I use. Simple split shots. And this split shot is designed to be able to attach and detach from the line. For another alternative weight, you can use the swivels themselves for weight. The split shot and the swivels is perfect for the bait to sink below the surface but also allow the float to stay floating above the surface. Fluorocarbon 6 pound is the weight I recommend. Piper aren't so big so you don't need heavy line to target them. And Piper are also extremely line shy. So you need to fool them by grabbing the hook and fluorocarbon turns the trace invisible which is another bonus to fool the Piper. So here is one way to construct this rig. 30 centimeters of leader with one split shot and a hook at the end and a swivel at the other. The good thing about this rig is that it allows it to drift into the current naturally and this way the piper or any other bait fish will be able to grab the bait without fear or suspecting anything. And here is what the setup should look like. Easy as that. And hopefully you'll be able to catch some piper more easily or just have fun in general. Now here are some additional tips and tricks I'll add before calling this video a finish. One is burly. As I demonstrated before, you can just stick with simple burly just to attract the piper to the area. Even plain stale bread is enough to get their attention. 
as you can see in this video. When watching the float, it's really simple. When it goes down, fish on. Piper, however, can play tricks and the movement on the float can also be very deceptive as well. For example, in this footage, the float was so large that it was simply laying on the side, but when I saw the slightest movement, I did a quick strike and managed to get a double hookup on Piper, which was pretty cool. So, as I mentioned before, when you notice something unusual, or even see the slightest unnatural movement on the float, give it a small tug, and you'll be able to hook onto that wary Piper very quickly. When striking, don't strike too aggressively. Pipers are just small and slender, so even a winding action is enough to set the hook onto the fish. Also when striking, make sure you are striking parallel to the water, so that one, the bait will still be in the water, and if the piper is still interested, they'll take it again. But it can be a hassle if the bait is soft and falls off if you strike by mistake. But anyway, this is a tip I learned through soft baiting. Also, by having your rod parallel to the water, the wind won't catch your line which can hinder the drift of your float. So I hope everyone had enjoyed watching this second updated version on the Piper tutorial video. And if you enjoyed watching this video, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. And also, I hope everyone will enjoy my future uploads, which is yet to come. Again, thank you for watching everybody.